Welcome to the ninth edition of the NAI Weekly Football Report. I'm your host, Alan Grossbach, alongside Chad Waller, coming to you from the NAI headquarters in downtown Kansas City, Missouri. You know, it was really, really crazy this last weekend. We had two teams that were undefeated to go down, number one, number four, and now we've got one final regular season weekend that we'll really talk about, but it's just exciting if you're an NAI football fan. Yeah, a lot of, lot of surprising movement over this last weekend, and that really will make things, as you said, pretty interesting coming into this final weekend in our, final NAI, in our football championship series mm -hmm. selection um, next Sunday. You know, we're changing the focus of the show a little bit this week, and we're spending more time diving into the conference races and looking at some of the key games that occurred within them. So hang with us as we try to describe all the tiebreakers and everything else. And before we really jump into that part of the show, I want to mention something historic that occurred last weekend in Kansas City. Dr. Tom Osborne, former Hastings College three-sport athlete and head coach slash athletic director at the University of Nebraska, was commemorated for his work with the NAI and his values for the champions of character towards the champions of character program, the football national championship trophy was renamed the Tom Osborne National Championship Trophy, and we at the NAI are really excited to have this trophy named after such a significant public figure. You know, he's been such a key contributor to sports and to character development. Um, throughout his career and it's it's exciting for us. Yeah and we were there at the luncheon last week and what a great event. Um, name recognition, Dr. Tom Osborne was a keynote speaker. He brought in over 700 people and we were expecting about 600 so um, had to actually turn people away from the luncheon. What a great event and actually next week we'll uh, we'll maybe have the trophy where we can show people on the show what it, what it looks like, so yeah. stay tuned. And now we're gonna kick off with the Central States Football League and dive right into one of our 10 leagues in those races. Um, this past weekend, Langston secured at least a share of the Central States Football League title with a thrilling 39-37 upset win over number 22 Bacone uh, this past Saturday. Bacone led 37-33 with less than two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter on a 91-yard touchdown pass from Kyle Cuban to Jamal Sorrell. However, Langston would respond in those final two minutes after Bacone gave him a short field on the kickoff. So. Uh, we, I believe it was at the 40-yard line at a short field under two minutes to go, and they made use of that uh, short field as Langston took the lead three plays later when Mark Wright connected with Cordera Frazier uh, for a 30-yard touchdown pass. The PAT was blocked, resulting in the 39-37 win as Langston held on. Wright was the star for Langston, leading the lines in passing with 140 yards and two touchdowns and also rushing for 115, 115 yards and a score. Langston is now 4-0 in the Central States Football League, while Bacone and Southwestern Assemblies of God are one game back at 3-1. If Langston were to lose this weekend, the conference could technically end in a tie. However, the Lions would still receive the automatic berth to the Football Championship Series on that tiebreaker. The Lions did climb into the top 25 this week at number 24, while Bacone, who was at number 22, fell three places to number 25 with a loss. Langston will still need to climb up to at least number 20 to receive that automatic berth that, that we've always talked about. So um, it may be tough for them to jump up four spots um, this weekend if they do win to get in that top 20, but uh, we'll just have to see what happens. We've talked about it all along. Central States Football League has been a great historic tradition in terms of a conference. We'll see what happens in that league. Yeah, you never know how the polls are going to fall out. Langston plays a winless Wayland Baptist yeah. this weekend, so if they put up enough of an, an impressive enough yeah. win, I could see them jumping into that top 20 range. Um, you know, they're playing really well right now. They, they started the year ranked in the top 25 in the preseason poll, but lost three or four in a row, and mm -hmm. now they're really on a roll. I believe they've won five straight. Mm -hmm. You know, they've swept the Central States Football League, so a team to watch moving forward as we move towards the playoffs, that's for sure. Yep, you're right. Moving out west into the Frontier Conference, Carroll College wrapped up their 14th Frontier Conference title in the last 15 years with an exciting 37-35 win over Rocky Mountain. The Fighting States won the contest on Sojo Smith 38-yard field goal as time expired. You know, an interesting note, chat about this attempt was that Smith's career long entering the game was only 43 yards. This wasn't a gimme for him, quite a kick by Smith. And you're talking, too, we're in the Rocky Mountain region, right? So it's not going to be 70 degrees and a nice playing surface to kick it on, either. Exactly. <laughs> I, I'm not certain what the temperature was in Helena on Saturday, but you, you could make an <laughs> assumption that in November in Helena it could have been a little chilly. Yeah. You know, offense highlighted the day for the, as the two teams combined for 969 yards of total offense, despite two opposing styles. You know, Carroll's a real ground-and-pound team, and Rocky Mountain likes to throw the ball around. Mm -hmm. Carroll tied a season high with 311 yards rushing as a team, including a career-best 208, or excuse me, a season-best 208 yards on 33 carries from senior running back Dustin Rinker. He's really been a mainstay for Carroll this season. 
On the opposite side, something to not be ignored was the play of Rocky Mountain quarterback Bryce Baker. He, threw, he completed 31 of 46 attempts, 67.4%, for 394 yards and four touchdowns. Baker has now thrown for four touchdowns in four straight games. Pretty impressive. Um, looking at the conference as a whole, Carroll leads the league and is in the driver's seat, followed by Rocky Mountain. Mm -hmm. um, Southern Oregon, who was tied for second place, dropped, dropped one spot into third place after losing to an unranked Eastern Oregon team this past weekend. You know, Carroll's victory propelled them into the top three. They're number three in the rankings this week, while Rocky Mountain dropped to number 11, and Southern Oregon fell out of the poll. You know, Chad, a, a kind of a key thing about Rocky Mountain's drop is at number seven, they were in a prime spot to host a playoff yeah. game. Yeah. Now they're in a situation where they're, they're most likely going to have to travel. Yeah, you're right. And uh, this is probably one conference where we're pretty confident in terms of what's going to happen with Carroll in the driver's seat, they won that right title. But you're, you're right, Rocky Mountain should get in, but now they're going to have to go on the road somewhere. You're right. And now we turn to the Great Plains Athletic Conference and a huge upset as number 19 Northwestern upended top-ranked and undefeated Morningside 38-28 last Saturday. Um, for Northwestern, Red Raider running back Theo Bartman, who ended up being the NAI Offensive Player of the Game, or Player of the Week, excuse me. He led the offensive charge for Northwestern, rushing for 123 yards and a career best, 33 carries. He also scored a career high four touchdowns in the winning effort. Morningside's offense recorded its ninth straight game of at least 500 yards of total offense with 512, including 360 through the air. However, that offense kind of was negated as they turned the ball over five times in that loss, including three fumbles. Um, despite the loss, Morningside, who had previously won 25 straight Great Plains Athletic Conference regular season games, still owns a one-game lead over Northwestern and Dakota Wesleyan in the conference standings. So, if the Mustangs can win on Saturday against Doan, they will be the outright GPAC champion, their third straight title. Morningside dropped to number five with the loss in this week's coaches poll, while arguably more importantly for the GPAC, Northwestern jumped to number 13. Dakota Wesleyan also made its way into the poll, ranking at number 22. So talking more, a little bit more about Northwestern, they jumped into that, um, that little region there that puts them in a prime spot to be one of the at-large teams in the football championship series. You're right. You have to rank in the top 20 to, to, to garner any tort type of berth mm -hmm. into the, the football championship series. But that, that sweet spot for at-large berths is really kind of that you know, that 6 to, to 13 range. So um, a big, big boost for Northwestern and a, and a big win. And, you know, you mentioned that um, Morningside with a win against Doan, yeah. you know, clinches the, the outright title. But if they lose and um, Northwestern knocks off Midland mm -hmm. um, this upcoming weekend, Northwestern owns the tiebreaker and they would get the automatic spot. So Morningside really in the driver's seat, but you can still get a little bit of shakeup in the GPAC. Yeah, never would I have guessed that Morningside has two losses and not win the GPAC title when we were talking even last week. But you're right, Northwestern, it's how you finish the season, and they're really finishing it strong. Agreed, agreed. You know, moving into the Heart of America Athletic Conference, they have three teams tied atop the league standings at 7-1 and one records. In the league's only top 25 battle this past weekend, Missouri Valley, somewhat surprisingly, mm -hmm. thrashed previously unbeaten Benedictine 42 to 14. Now this game was played in Marshall. It wasn't on the home field in Atchison for the Ravens. Missouri Valley's physical defense set the tone early on when defensive lineman Ty Phillips sacked Benedictine's quarterback on the first play from scrimmage. Now Phillips had a tremendous game. I think he finished with four and a half tackles for loss, and I believe three and a half of them were sacks. So he was, you know, a big time performer for the Vikings and actually earned our National Defensive Player of the Week for that performance. And that sack led to a three and out on, on the Ravens opening drive. And one other thing about defense too, Benedictine came into the game averaging like 40 points a game. So they were a high octane offense and that surprised me. I know Missouri's Valley defense is always top five in the nation, but to hold Benedictine to 14 points is really surprising. You're right, they really held them in check. Yeah. Now the Viking offense, they led by 28 points at halftime and quarterback Bruce Reyes had another big game for Missouri Valley. He led the offense with 287 yards passing and a touchdown. As a unit, the Viking offense racked up 519 yards of total offense, while like you mentioned, Benedictine's offense was limited to a season low 272 yards. The Vikings also forced four Raven turnovers. You know, moving to Baker, and Baker's kind of been quietly climbing their way up the top 25 and kind of just hovering around atop the, the league standings. They picked up their ninth overall win of the season this last weekend mm -hmm. with a dominating 40-16 win at Graceland. 
Now looking at this week's top 25, Benedictine's loss allowed Baker to jump to number four and Missouri Valley crept up to number seven, while the Ravens fell five places to number nine. So they're all still ranked in that top mm -hmm. 10 range, likely to make the playoffs. Yeah. But, you know, it, a lot of shifting. Now, Peru State, Nebraska is also one of the conference's ranked teams, and they check in at number 19, but they lost last weekend to an unranked Evangel team, 35-27. Now, if all three teams, and I'm talking Baker, Benedictine, Missouri Valley, mm -hmm. win this upcoming weekend, the Heart of America Athletic Conference will have a shared championship, and Baker would receive the automatic berth, assuming they remain the highest ranked team in the conference, of the conference, mm -hmm in the national poll. That's that's their tiebreaker for a round robin um, tie at the mm -hmm. top is the highest ranked team in the national poll gets that automatic burst. So Baker, you know, crept up there right at the right time. Mm -hmm. um, Wildcats really playing well. Now looking at some of the games, looking at the three games for these teams, number 19 Peru State has to go to number four Baker, so not an easy game for the Wildcats. Number seven Missouri Valley is at Avila, and number nine Benedictine is at Evangel. So Baker hosts a top 25 team, mm -hmm. and Missouri Valley and Benedictine have to go on the road. So not, not the easiest weekend, but you never know how things will shake out. Yeah, what I'm kind of looking in, uh, in at with those three games is, let's say Baker loses to Bruce State. Bruce State's within the top 20, but will they fall into that at-large kind of range of ranked teams to get into the playoffs? But if Baker wins and all three of the top three teams in the heart win, we could conceivably see three Heart of America teams host an opening round game in the football championship series. You're right. Conceivably. They're within that level, yeah. yeah. That's pretty crazy. Now with uh, another crazy conference that we're going to try to shake out and, and help you all understand is the Kansas Collegiate Athletic Conference. And uh, entering this past weekend, it was one of the more confusing leagues in the NEI when it comes to figuring out who might claim the conference's automatic berth. And it became a little clearer when Ottawa knocked off Friends 38-28 in the NEI Football Game of the Week. The Braves were led by running back Luke Lundy with 164 four yards rushing, and four scores. As has been the case in many of the games we've highlighted so far, turnovers played a key role. Ottawa forced five friends' turnovers. Uh, conversely for friends, running back Thomas Hankerson shined in the loss, recording a season-high 281 yards rushing and two touchdowns on 36 attempts. Joining Hankerson with more than 100 yards rushing was quarterback Derek Reset with 19 rushes for 120 yards and a score. Ottawa, who climbed to number eight with, uh, with the win in this week's poll, and Sterling, the number 16 team this week, are currently tied atop the KCAC standings with 7-1 and one league records. The Warriors hold a tiebreaker because of their head-to-head -head win um, earlier against Ottawa. So Sterling, they wrap up the regular season Saturday at Kansas Wesleyan, while Ottawa hosts number 12 Tabor. So Sterling really holds, holds their own destiny. If they went out, they'll win that tiebreaker and claim the outright berth from the KCAC. You're right. And, you know, two teams we didn't really mention are number 12 Tabor. I guess mm -hmm. we did touch on them. Mm -hmm. But then also, you know, the Friends squad, the, the KCAC has four teams that are ranked within the top 20, right, yeah. or close to or within the top 20 this week. Yeah. So um, conceivably, conceivably, depending on how things shake out, you could see three or four KCAC teams mm -hmm. make the playoffs. Again, the likelihood of all four isn't isn't great, but um, to get three is is could potentially happen. And I feel like Sterling kind of came on strong at the end of the year to kind of put themselves in this position to get that auto berth. You're right. I think they would, if they make the playoffs. I think they would be our surprise team of the season. Yeah. You know, they started the year unranked, kind of off all the radar. I'd have to go back and look at the KCAC conference preseason poll, mm -hmm. but I think they were fourth or fifth maybe. And um, so yeah, I would I would vote them as surprise team of the year. Coach Lambert has done a tremendous job with his Warriors, and they're they're really on a roll. Cool. Uh, moving into the Mid South Conference and starting with the East Division, another team that's been really on a roll is the University of the Cumberlands, and they're they're five and zero, and they're nine and zero on the season, so still one of our unbeaten's. And they secured the East Division's automatic berth with a 38-0 shutout win over Kentucky Christian this last weekend. The Patriots currently rest one game in front of Georgetown in the league standings, and even if Cumberland loses next Saturday at Bluefield and Georgetown defeats Lindsey Wilson, the Patriots are guaranteed the conference's automatic berth due to a 38-35 win in the two sides meetings meeting on October 19th. Now this week, Cumberland's earned its highest ever ranking, and they're our new number one. Morningside had spent the previous nine polls at number one, so this is the first time we've had a new team at number one in a long time, and the, the Patriots are very deserving. Yeah. They've had a tremendous season. Yeah, they've uh, they've won by a, a very large margin against a lot of good teams, ranked teams in that Mid-South Conference, and like you said, they uh, with the loss, 
deservedly so uh, in that number one spot. You know, we mentioned Friends as a strong running team, and the Patriots are kind of the pinnacle of running, at least this year in the NAI, as they lead the NAI in rushing yards per game with more than averaging more than 350 yards per game. And whether it's it's Craig, the quarterback, or mm -hmm. whoever else, they're just a very strong running squad. And I know they play in Kentucky, which is not a cold region like we talked with the Rocky Mountain region, but running is key, defense is key. If you can throw the ball, I believe that's bonus, but um, one of the top, uh, I think, teams rolling into the playoffs. You're right, and a game we kind of kind of just breezed by within this division is that Georgetown Lindsey Wilson game. You know, Georgetown's number 14, Lindsey Wilson's number 15. Yeah. The game is in Georgetown. The loser of that game could conceivably fall out of that at-large sweet spot we mentioned earlier. So a big game for both sides. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that potential um, look at where they land within the conference standings. Yep. Moving into the West Division, number 10 Faulkner currently holds a half-game lead at 4-1 and one over Reinhardt and Campbellsville, who are at 3-1. and one. Both those teams are unranked. Um, the race was in the hands of first-year program Reinhardt and Campbellsville heading into this past weekend, but both programs lost. Reinhardt fell to uh, then unranked Cumberland University, and Campbellsville lost to Faulkner. Now, if Faulkner defeats Kentucky Christian on Saturday, you know, they're a team that's 3-7 and seven and has lost three straight, then the Eagles will be the West champion and get that automatic berth. You know, to note, Campbellsville hosts Reinhardt, and the winner of that game still has a shot, but only if Faulkner loses that game. Now keep in mind, to receive the automatic berth, the league's winner must be ranked within the top 20. So if Faulkner loses and say Reinhardt wins, they would have to jump back up into that 20 threshold mm -hmm. to receive the automatic spot. I would assume, even with a loss, which you know may not happen, Faulkner could still land within that large situation, yeah. but you wouldn't want to you know, take yourself out of a potential, you know, driver's seat. Yeah, what a roller coaster the last couple weeks, I, I, I would say, for, uh, for, um, for Reinhardt. First year program, we talked a lot about them. Surprising wins, they got in the top 20. Like you said, going into last weekend, they basically held their own destiny. If they won out this past weekend, they ended up losing to unranked Cumberland. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll have to see what happens this weekend. You're right, a lot could shake out. And now I'm going to turn our attention to the Mid-States Football Association where we have the two leagues. First, the Midwest League, and Grandview secured an outright uh, MSFA Midwest title with a 25-17 win over William Penn. So they continue to roll. They're undefeated, one of two still left in the NAI, and they got that eight-point win this past weekend. Quarterback Derek Fulton and wide receiver Brady Rowland were the spark plugs for the Viking offense once again. Fulton led the team with 284 total yards, including 230 through the air. He also accounted for two touchdowns on the afternoon. Roland paced the receiving core for Grandview with five catches for 87 yards. Grandview, the auto qualifier from the conference, has a week off, which is a built-in bye week for them in the regular season mm -hmm. before opening um, their first round play um, on November 23rd. Uh, Grandview jumped one place in this week's coaches poll to a program best number two ranking right behind number one Cumberland's out of Kentucky. Number 17, St. Ambrose, and number 21, St. Xavier, are also ranked in the league. The Bees of St. Ambrose play Waldorf this weekend, while St. Xavier travels to Olivet Nazarene. So um, those two teams still have a shot. St. Xavier, they're number 21. Will they get a big win and propel them in the top 20 to even uh, be eligible for the, for the postseason? We'll have to see, but they've been notoriously a strong program. Yeah, it'll be a little surprising to not have San, potentially not have San Xavier in the playoffs. You know, it, just two years ago they won our national yeah. title and they were semifinalists last year and, and fell to Morningside in that I believe in in that semifinal round. So um, definitely interesting to not have them more in the mix than they are. But you never know. A big win against Olivet Nazarene, they could jump up within that threshold. Yep. And now the Mid East League, there's three teams we have to talk about, and that's St. Francis of Indiana. St. Francis of Illinois, and Marion, who are currently tied atop uh, the standings with 4-1 records. Uh, the Cougars of St. Francis, Indiana, who jumped to number six this week, can claim the auto berth from that league with a win against Marion on Saturday. St. Francis of Illinois, they picked up a big win this past weekend to get in the tie uh, atop the league standings with a two-point victory, 21-19 over St. Ambrose in a crossover game. Quarterback E.J. White was an efficient 17 for 26 passing for 209 yards and two touchdowns. He also led the ground game with 87 yards and 17 attempts. Wide receiver Troy Torrance was White's favorite target on the afternoon with eight catches for 123 uh, and two, two touchdowns. 
With his fourth 100-yard effort of the season, Torrance became the first player in St. Francis history to surpass 1,000 1, yards receiving in a season. He currently has 1,049. The win propelled the Fighting Saints of St. Francis of Illinois to number 17 spot in this week's coaches poll. So some, some stuff could shake out. Um, Marion, you know, talking about defending national champions, Marion, um, last year's title winner. Um, we'll, we'll have to see if they can win, but conceivably they might not make, make the playoffs either. Yeah, this is a pretty confusing league. And like you mentioned, St. Francis, Indiana really controls their own destiny with a win. They get the automatic yep. spot. Now saying Marion wins and St. Francis of Illinois wins, who I believe mm -hmm. they play Taylor this weekend, mm -hmm. So they'd both be at five and one, and St. Francis, Indiana would be at four and two. Mm -hmm. St. Francis of Illinois gets that automatic spot. So if I haven't totally confused you with that, <laughs> um, just tune in next weekend, and it'll all get it all gets squared away. <laughs> and um, you know, let's look forward at some of the the key games coming up this week that feature top 25 teams against top 25 teams, and a few of these we've touched on already. And that's number 19 Peru State. They have to go to number four Baker. Number 12 Tabor. Goes to number eight, Ottawa. And, you know, and it kind of in my opinion, um, maybe the, one of the more important games, at least for that at-large mm -hmm. um, ranking, yep. number 15, Lindsey Wilson, is at number 14, Georgetown, out of the Mid-States Conference, Mid-States, or excuse me, Mid-South yeah. Conference. Because that Mid-South race um, really is, has been kind of sewed up. But if Georgetown, Lindsey Wilson, that winner, like you said, could put themselves in position for a good spot for an at-large in the top 20, hopefully they'll stay within the top 15. Right. Right. Well, that puts a wrap on this edition of the NAI Weekly Football Report brought to you by Play NAI, the NAI's Eligibility Center. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back on Sunday at 3 p.m. Central Time for a live announcement of the NAI Football Championship Series qualifiers and pairings. You don't want to miss it. And thanks, and until next time, good night.